Multiple major winter storms on the way crossing the United States, bringing big snowfall totals and hazardous travel. Welcome in, folks. Happy Friday, November 28th, the day after Thanksgiving, Black Friday. Many of you probably out shopping right now or at least uh, thinking about it, or maybe you stayed uh, in for today. Personally, I'm not big on Black Friday, so I stayed on in. But uh, for a lot of us, today might be one of the better days to get out before things really go downhill. I'm tracking big snowfall totals, multiple rounds of snow, and even ice potential over the next uh, week and the pattern looks to stay ripe really through much of December for big time winter weather. If you're new to the channel, welcome. My name is Gerald. I'm a meteorologist at WCCB Charlotte. If you haven't already, go ahead, like the video, subscribe and hit the bell for the latest notifications. Doing all those things are free. It doesn't cost you a penny. It's not going to sign you up for some service. All it's going to do is help keep you weather wise as I continue to track this very active winter pattern. With that said, let's dive right on into it, folks, and give you the latest. You can see next to me, brand new, hot off the press, the afternoon run of our European computer model showing yeah, a very active stretch ahead with multiple winter storms potentially crossing the country and you could even see through the end of uh, or I should say the start of December and into the middle of the month uh, the pattern looks to stay very active with a big time winter storm uh, potential or lining up and I already see big time totals upwards of a foot on the way uh, for many really over even just the next couple of days and that's why we have plenty of watches warnings and advisories out there right now winter storm warnings and all of the pink boxes for almost the entire state of Iowa, the northern half of Indiana, uh, Illinois, southern Wisconsin, southern Minnesota. This does include places like Chicago, where we could see uh, some folks in that region find double digit snowfall totals before all is said and done. And remember, this is only storm number one that is carving this path of uh, wintry alerts. Another one going to be on the way by the start of this coming week that's likely to expand the map and add more winter alerts into the Ohio Valley and even up into the northeast, where some folks could see their first snowfall of the the year. All right, let's go ahead and break down uh, why this is happening as well. And uh, it's all coming back kind of to the upper levels. We've got a shortwave piece of energy back into the northern Rockies. And this is our 500 millibar height uh, vorticity map. Vorticity is a great tool to use when forecasting where a storm is going to end up going and if it's likely to strengthen. And the energy that is going to produce this storm that's going to bring all the alerts that uh, I just showed you is currently right over the Rockies uh, here this evening and starting to get its act together. It's all that spin here in the mid-levels I'm showing you that is going to uh, kind of uh, find down-sloping winds uh, from the Rocky Mountains, and it's really going to help to stretch and create surface low pressure. That low pressure going to create fronts. Those fronts going to create lift. That lift going to create snowfall for many of us. And you can see the energy working right through the Central Plains and into the Midwest here by Saturday afternoon tomorrow. We've got a well-defined now negatively tilted trough. Anytime a trough turns negative, uh, that really allows it to uh, enhance the lift even more over these surface low pressure uh, systems that helps to strengthen them and uh, increase uh, the potential for heavy snowfall rates and totals and then all of that energy crossing on up through uh, the Great Lakes and into the Northeast by the end of this weekend and behind it, yeah, there's our next system beginning to already show up here on the models. All right, let's go ahead and time out this first storm, show you how it could look, what kind of snowfall totals we're looking at, and then we'll break down this next system that you already see showing up on the map. All right, we'll start with the uh, RGM model, and I think it's doing a pretty good job of showing how the storm is generally going to unfold. Remember, right now, out there for many of us, still dealing with the lake effect snow that we've been plagued by really for the past couple of days up in the Midwest. Uh, so pretty heavy snowfall rates continuing into the Tug Hill, into places like Erie and up near Cleveland, seeing some of that snow. But the big story, by the time we get to this evening, pictured here right around 7 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Central Time, see that belt of snow beginning to develop back into the Dakotas and into Iowa. Overnight tonight, it's going to be a solid snowstorm for Iowa. It's going to really just be snowing all night. Same thing for much of uh, extreme northern um, Missouri here, especially into northeastern Missouri, finding plenty of that snow. Uh, watch for a little bit of ice this evening into south central Nebraska. Could see uh, slightly icier conditions there compared to really everyone else on the map where it's either going to be rain or snow. Overnight tonight, and by the time we're getting into early tomorrow morning, I think we're going to start with a good burst of snow for St. Louis. Uh, really much of the state of Illinois going to start a snowfall early tomorrow morning. As you go through the day, though, you can see I'm expecting a bit of a deformation band of sorts to kind of set up right here along the edge where we're going to have rain on the south side and very heavy wet snowfall on the north side. That could try to swing through places like, uh, like St. Louis uh, overnight, or I should say early tomorrow morning, rather. Uh, pictured here around 10 a.m. Eastern time, 9 a.m. Uh, local time there uh, in uh, the St. Louis metro. 
Then throughout the day, the warm nose starts to poke its ugly head and you can start to see this rain snow line start to become more horizontal. That indicates that the warm front starting to lift northward at this point. But this is going to be an all snow event for Chicago. Uh, like I said, the entire state of Iowa, southern Wisconsin, southern Minnesota, all snow, uh, all snow it looks like for northern Indiana, mainly rain though down into the Ozarks from this one at least. And uh, really same thing for southern Illinois, southern Indiana and much of uh, Kentucky. Here you go by Saturday evening. It's still snowing good in Chicago. It's snowing good into uh, Iowa, Wisconsin, much of Michigan. Heavier snowfall rates getting into central Indiana and into Ohio. And then the storm starts to weaken a little bit as it occludes and loses some of that upper level support here by overnight uh, Saturday into Sunday. Uh, you can see here right around midnight uh, on Sunday morning, but still snowing at least an all right clip for many up here into the Midwest. And then uh, you keep it going. And then our friends into the interior Northeast going to get a shot of snow on the front end of this thing. I think really all rain for the I-95. Now the next storm could be a bit of a different story, but looks like all rain for the Carolinas. Uh, well, I say that. Let me back it up a little bit. I will mention into the mountains or the foothills, kind of those low-lying areas that cold air lights, uh, likes to get trapped here into North Carolina. Maybe even uh, the Highway 11 corridor of South Carolina could see a little bit of icing to start off here on Sunday morning. Be mindful of that. That could impact travel in a bit of a surprise way not many people are talking about, uh, but would not last very long. And you can see here by Sunday afternoon, the only snow left over is into the interior of the Northeast and some wraparound lake effect snow there into Michigan. And then throughout the day Sunday, just some rain showers along the I-95. The system continues to weaken and starts to pull on out of here and then check it out. There's the next storm on the horizon that we'll need to break down in just a moment. But before we do, what kind of snowfall totals can we expect from the storm I just showed you? Well, for some of us, potentially double digit snowfall totals. Let's show it to you. All right, this is the brand new National Weather Service forecast. I'm showing it to you because I think they're doing a pretty good job at uh, pinpointing where the highest snowfall totals will be. We'll start up into the northern plains and you can see much of South Dakota going to get some good snow out of this into the south and uh, especially southeastern section of the state could see higher in totals, maybe half a foot plus uh, would not shock me. Uh, other areas throughout the state where we have some higher terrain so you can kind of see sprinkled in could also get some of those higher totals. But either way, pretty good early season winter storm out into that part of the country. Where the big totals are going to come, though, again, where we could see more than a foot of snow going to be into the heart of Iowa as it stands right now. This is where it's going to be all snow the entire time, and it's just going to keep snowing at a pretty good clip for, uh, you know, almost a good 24 hours or so, give or take a little bit. That's why we could see double digit, uh, a foot plus of snowfall. So tra travel going to be uh, a kind of nightmare into this part of the state here uh, through much of your Saturday, uh, even into your overnight Saturday and into the start of your Sunday. And uh, it's no picnic elsewhere as well, expecting a uh, half a foot to a foot in Chicago. Uh, really, the entire northern half of Illinois and Indiana likely to see around half a foot plus of snowfall. A lot of that stretching up into much of uh, Michigan. I think uh, southwestern Michigan there could be a hot spot where maybe we see double digit snowfall as well. Try to sprinkle in southern Wisconsin looks like big snowfall in terms of some battleground zones um, into the Minneapolis area. The Twin Cities, not a battleground. It's going to be plenty cold enough. Anything that falls will be snow but the heaviest axis of precipitation likely to your south a little bit. So uh, the south side of the metro could see upwards of half a foot. The north side of the metro, maybe only a couple of inches. Same for St. Louis, where we're going to start a snow. You could get a quick burst that brings a couple of inches, uh, but then eventually going to transition to maybe some sleet and then some good old-fashioned rainfall by the end of the event for folks out that way. And a lot of metros here on the south side going to be in that same general um, kind of forecast. Indianapolis, another similar uh, city that could see a forecast kind of like St. Louis out of this. But those of you that get all snow boy oh boy we're seeing some really good totals there showing up for portions of Iowa as for the Northeast this is the blend of models and uh, this is combining the lake effect still to come today on top of uh, the next storm and it's really an interior Northeast event higher elevation Vermont New Hampshire uh, up into northern Maine could get some pretty good snow out of this but not an I-95 snow at least with this storm system the next one, though, could be slightly different. Let's show you the setup on that one. The model data, what uncertainty we still have to uh, unravel, but who I think has a really good shot at again seeing snow, potentially even further south and east than you see on this map. Well, all these snowfall chances are really thanks to a quite an active jet stream that is continuing to be wavy and dipping a good amount here. By Sunday afternoon, the same map I showed you earlier with vorticity. Uh, here's the storm system that's going to bring all the snow I just showed you. But the next piece of energy, once again, digging out into the Rockies, this time 
further south even than the uh, previous storm. And check it out, gets all the way down to the four corners. By the time we're getting to Monday afternoon, this is 18Z, December 1st. So yeah, Monday afternoon, the start of the month. It's a festive month. Many of us probably want to see snow, and I see uh, some definitely on the horizon. As this energy crosses the Rockies, same process as the current storm. It's going to begin to stretch as it gets into those downsloping winds. That's going to flare up low pressure, and a classic Colorado low looks to form here. Um, or maybe you could even call it a bit of a New Mexico low. It might be that far south. And then you keep going and check out all the energy, again, starting positively tilted here. Uh, and that's going to keep the system relatively weak to start. But once it begins to turn neutral and eventually even uh, tries to get a bit of a negative tilt right into here as it rides through the southeast and up the eastern seaboard, that once more is going to increase our lift into the upper levels. We get a lot of upper level divergence. Remember, that's the separating air I tell you about. That creates a void. And guess what fills that void? More air from below. That means a lot of rising motion. You do that over any sort of low pressure, it's just going to strengthen it even more. And that's why we could even see nor'easter potential out of this system as it flares up and rides right up the eastern seaboard. Let me show you what it could look like in the models, and then we'll get into the potential snowfall hotspots with this storm. Uh, and again, it could see once again at pretty high totals. I'll give you a pretty in-depth look here at the European model. You can see the storm beginning to develop. This is, again, Monday afternoon. So the same thing I just showed you on the other model. Snow potentially breaking out into portions of the Central Plains. All rain down into Louisiana and Mississippi. But eventually, that cold air and uh, this low pressure that begins to develop right along the Gulf begin to overlap. And because of that, we start to see some snow breaking out into uh, areas that might not see it with this current storm into southern uh, Missouri, into poor, uh, potentially portions of Kentucky. Southern Illinois, Southern Indiana, ice tries breaking out into the apps here into the Virginias, maybe as far south as North Carolina could see ice. And then the systems really overlap. Our coastal low really begins to strengthen here by Tuesday afternoon. And it's a nice band of snow up into much of Pennsylvania, into Ohio, potentially Harrisburg State College. Could a place like D.C. and Baltimore see snow? I definitely think at least on the front end of this, you've got a shot. And maybe the back end is cold air once again wraps around. Shows snow into northern New Jersey, into the Hudson Valley. And check it out by uh, Tuesday evening into Wednesday. This is 0 Z or 7 p.m. East Coast time, Tuesday night. The low pressure takes advantage of the instability thanks to the very cold land and the still relatively warm Atlantic. That, with a lot of upper level lift, uh, the storm begins to bomb out a bit. Uh, maybe not quite to the full extent of bombogenesis, but either way, it starts to strengthen pretty rapidly here. And that throws a lot of moisture back into this cold air, and a, a very heavy band of snow begins to set up. Now, exactly where that band of snow is, that's what we still need to figure out, but I expect somebody here into the Northeast to get uh, a pretty good pummeling of some heavy snowfall totals. Already, I wouldn't rule out double-digit snowfall out of the storm. Again, the question being, though, where? And that's something we're going to have to iron out, but... Either way, you get a sub 990 millibar low here right off Cape Cod uh, during the start of December with cold air. Somebody's going to get pummeled pretty good. Now, I think this is going to be a mainly rain event for places like the Jersey Shore, Long Island, and uh, into coastal sections of New England. But I don't think you're going to have to go that far inland to find the heavy snow. I think western Massachusetts looks like a pretty good bullseye here. Southern New Ham uh, Hampshire, southern Vermont, maybe portions of Connecticut a little bit further inland from the coast. Boston, maybe one of those events you start as snow, you switch to rain, and then you end again as snow. As you can see on the European, that uh, cold air wrapping around and you get snow almost all the way to the Cape. At least it tries. And even into the down east areas of Maine, get a pretty good pummeling here for the Tuesday and Wednesday to come. That's the European model. I'm not going to go as in-depth on the GFS, but I'll just show it to you to say it's pretty similar. Now, a little bit further south on the GFS, the cold air is further south, gets a little bit of a wintry mix in places like Little Rock uh, into the Ozarks. And then the same thing for the mountains of North Carolina. Also tries to get some icy wintry mix here by overnight Monday into Tuesday. Uh, but it's a similar story, folks. Strong, strengthening, low pressure. By the time it gets to the Northeast, to pummeling somebody with heavy bowling ball-sized snowflakes, as my buddy Mitch West likes to say. And that's that's a full-blown winter storm showing up on the model. So both models now, right around 100 hours out, full-blown winter storm into portions of the Northeast. But how far south and east does it get? That's the question. Well, great way to try to answer that. Let's take a look at the ensembles and see what they say in terms of probabilities and uh, potential snowfall totals out of this event. 
I think the Ohio Valley is a prime candidate to get snow from this. Uh, however, I don't think it'll be quite as big total wise as the Northeast. You can see here on uh, the European ensembles that I'm showing you the general mean for snow uh, not half bad. Yeah, places like Louisville, uh, maybe down into Cincinnati, portions of the Ohio River Valley itself could definitely get snow. I don't think this will be a blockbuster storm for you, though, but maybe a good two to four inches. You can see that showing up here on the mean with the European and pretty quick moving here to start. It's kind of in here and then it's out of here. It could even uh, blanket Southern Ohio with some snow. I think you definitely uh, could easily find some snow out of this, potentially West Virginia. Uh, this again would be your Tuesday morning into your Tuesday afternoon into your Tuesday evening. And by Wednesday, it's out of here on the European ensembles. GFS ensembles, what does it show? Well, here's the uh, current storm that we're dealing with. We're going to be dealing with over the next 24 hours. Here comes the next one. And yeah, pretty good agreement, maybe slightly further north. But for a place like Louisville, that's pretty good model agreement. Indianapolis, probably going to get some snow. Much of Ohio in general, I think, going to get snowfall out of this. Just not going to be a blockbuster winter storm, but still enough. You're going to see some travel impacts, maybe some school delays or closures. Uh, it would not be out of the question here to start the new week. But luckily, pretty quick moving. The Northeast, this is where the storm's really going to strengthen. As both models showed, the storm getting quite strong, and this is where we're going to see some of the highest totals. Where, though? That's what we need to figure out still. On the European ensembles, if you look at the mean for snowfall, right where I kind of suggested, we've got a very good bullseye. I think right now, if I'm in southern Vermont, southern New Hampshire, uh, western Massachusetts, even central Massachusetts, uh, this could be a, a pretty good early season winter storm, maybe half a foot to a foot. I know it's very early guesses, but I expect a band of very heavy snow somewhere right now, at least uh, what the model data is showing would support that exact placement, obviously to iron out, but I really like that area there in pink. Could even get some snow uh, accumulating down into uh, northern New Jersey, the Hudson Valley, like I said, portions of Connecticut, Rhode Island. I think if you're up towards Scranton, back towards um, uh, Harrisburg, State College could get some stuff. The northern suburbs of Philadelphia, uh, go birds, even got my Eagles jersey on, about to watch the game. Hopefully I'm going to finish this up, but uh, I could get some snow there. Now, if you're in Philly itself, if you're in central Jersey, New York City, uh, into uh, Baltimore, D.C., it's the typical northern northern part of the city, or at least north of the city, maybe not even the northern sections of the city themselves. Uh, it could be a pretty good little winter storm. South, very unlikely at this point, you're going to get a whole lot. Then the city's right in the battleground zone. So once we get into mesoscale model range, we'll be able to fine tune the details a little bit more, but pretty good uh, showing there on the European ensembles. As for the GFS and its ensemble members, well, here you go. A pretty similar look, maybe a little bit further inland on the GFS, but either way, a pretty good snowfall mean for this far out into time. Now, let me also show you this, uh, something we need to be mindful of, and that is potential icing. Now, I don't uh, right now expect a huge ice storm, but we do need to be very mindful. If we're in the mountains of North Carolina into Virginia, West Virginia, uh, we do see a mean right now in the European ensembles, maybe a quarter of an inch to a half an inch of ice. This is a setup that would definitely support that. We've got a lot of cold air right now over this region. We're continuing to get shots of cold air, and these storms are definitely going to probably move in before all that cold air can erode, especially in some of the cold air damming regions where in some of those valleys that cold air really likes to get trapped. Could see uh, icing in areas like that with this storm system on the way. Alrighty, folks, uh, that's an update on the current storm. That's an update on the next storm. Uh, I did have some maps pulled up, but I think I'm just going to save them for next time and once we kind of get through these. Uh, but just know that down the road, even through the rest of December, continues to look quite uh, wintry. So if you don't get anything from these two, uh, we've got more time to go. And just as I kind of forecasted weeks ago, not to pat myself on the back too much, but every storm, the snow line is kind of working further and further and further east and south. So it's a good sign. We're laying snowpack to the north and uh, plenty more opportunities for winter weather for other folks throughout the month of December. All right. Y'all have a great one. Stay safe. Think snow. And I'll see you all next time.